Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be once again talking about that upcoming potential major winter storm. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think about the related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day... I want to know, which region of the United States do you think is going to be the most impacted by this winter storm? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, same thing we did yesterday, the confidence tab is going to be at the end of this video, so if you're curious how confident we are in this system, you can stay tuned for that. That's going to be at the very, very end. Now, let's just get straight into things. We're just going to take a look at our European model, then eventually our Canadian model and our GFS model. So we're going to do the same exact thing we did yesterday, except with the updated model output. We're taking a look at about 7 p.m. here on Saturday, so we're getting very close actually to the start of this storm. The confidence is a little lower than I would like it to be, to be honest, this close. We noticed there is some snow up there for the upper Midwest, but let's just take that forward to about 11 p.m. there on Sunday, January 24th, and we see we get that extension. We saw the same thing yesterday. It's going to extend basically all the way across from the Rockies through and through the plains uh, and into the Ohio Valley. It's not looking too major yet, but the European model actually at this point is the most major out of any of them. We've seen significant shifts. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. What we're going to do is move on and take a look at about 1 p.m. on Monday in just a moment where we're going to see this snowstorm really start to get its act together in just a moment. Now, there is going to be other factors involved here with this storm, including now potentially severe weather and even some pretty significant freezing rain as well. We're going to need to wait for the details on that stuff. So I included it in the thumbnail, but I'm not going to be talking about those two f factors too much throughout this video. Those two factors in particular are really, really tough to really uh, pin down pretty far out. So we're going to need to wait until we're about... I would say two days away until we start really, really talking about the severe weather, maybe three days. Uh, same story with the freezing rain. For now, we're taking a look at a 994 millibar low pressure center there located pretty much by uh, the corners of Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Illinois. A lot of states converge right there. Uh, and that's a pretty strong low pressure center, actually. This is looking like a quite strong storm. We can see that snow has just become a little bit more abundant there uh, on the northern end of this storm. Let's just take this forward towards about 7 p.m. there on Monday. And as you can see, we start to get a lot more snow here for the Ohio Valley and in the Mid-Atlantic. Our low pressure center is actually intensified to a 994 millibar low pressure center. You can see those pinks going on for Virginia, West Virginia, and portions of the Ohio Valley. That's where our freezing rain is coming down. So again, that is going to potentially be a factor moving forward. We're going to watch that very, very closely. Now, we're very close to seeing this one become a very major snowstorm in just a moment. At about 2 a.m., so the pretty overnight hours in between Monday and Tuesday there on the 25th and 26th, we're going to see this one really become a major winter storm, major snowstorm in just a moment. Now, this is probably one of the most intense frames here, according to the European model. We have plenty of severe weather going on to the south. Again, we're not going to talk about too much of it, but we do have a lot of shear going on, a lot of cape, and that low pressure center being located just to the north. That is a recipe for some severe weather activity down there in the southeast. We have freezing rain in between the rain and then the snow. So for Virginia, West Virginia especially, looking at potentially some freezing rain, and then very heavy snowfall going on for Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, D.C., the Delmarva. Again, yesterday we saw this much further north than this. It has shifted significantly further south. And I told you guys, the track is very, very uncertain at this point. I could easily see this shifting just as far south as it's gone, but going back north. We're going to take a look at some of those factors in a moment. And I'll let you guys know actually where I think this one's going to end up in just a moment. Uh, and what I'm going to tell you is I don't think it's going to end up with what this is showing right here. So that's kind of the little uh, sneak peek into my thoughts. But I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Let's move this forward towards about 7 a.m. there on Tuesday. And we do see some still some moderate to heavy snowfall going on for similar regions. And then it closes out by about 1 p.m. there on Tuesday as some snow showers for Virginia and North Carolina to close things out. Let's move on, take a little quick look at that GFS model. We do see that early snowfall going on for the upper Midwest here on the early hours of the 24th. That's going to be Sunday. And then we see that snowstorm begin. And actually, we see our first one move out and a second one develop. We saw the same thing yesterday from the GFS. It hasn't switched too much with what it thinks as far as those separate uh, systems. But the track is certainly very different on this model as well, similar to the European model. By the time we're taking a look at about 11 a.m. there on Monday, you can see that that 
really strong low pressure center is developing there in Oklahoma and Texas. It's not very strong yet, but it is going to become very strong. Uh, we do see some snowfall to the north for Colorado, Kansas, even some freezing rain developing. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards where we're going to really begin to see this storm develop for the Ohio Valley and the mid-Atlantic states as well. So compared to the European model, this is actually going to seem underwhelming, but we do see some pretty moderate to heavy snowfall going on for Missouri, and it really mixes in with freezing rain. It's kind of a wintry mix there for the southern regions of the Ohio Valley states, and then kind of for the southern mid-Atlantic. I think the problem here is the GFS is keeping this even further south than what the European model is saying, so it's limiting the amounts of snow that is possible. Also notice we don't really have too strong of a low pressure center available. So those are two factors really holding back this model compared to the European model. Uh, and the GFS does have a tendency to keep things a little bit too far south compared to what actually ends up happening. So we're going to be watching for that closely. Again, I'm going to talk about my actual thoughts on where I think it's going to track in a moment. And we see this close out by about maybe, maybe about 3 p.m. there on Tuesday. We see some snowfall for the mid-Atlantic states as well. Let's move on and take a look at that Canadian model. And I think this one actually has the most realistic output out of any of them. We see our low pressure center developing there over Texas and Oklahoma. We see that extension of snowfall from the Great Plains all the way through the Ohio Valley and in through the Northeast with some severe weather to the South and some freezing rain in between. Let's take this to about, well, that was about maybe uh, 3 or 4 a.m. there on Monday. Let's take it to about 11 p.m. on Monday, so just further into the day. We see a 995 millibar low pressure center there over some of the western regions of the Ohio Valley. So this one's already looking a little bit more like the European model rather than the GFS model. We see moderate to heavy snowfall for Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri there, uh, and even some going on for Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware as well, with some freezing rain, some significant freezing rain going on there as well, severe weather to the south. Uh, and then let's zoom in. We see a 998 millibar low pressure center, uh, and then kind of an extension of it over there off the east coast. That's a 997. The model is considering these to be separate low pressure centers, but it's actually just a very elongated low pressure center. So there's not going to be two separate storms, I don't think, here. Uh, they're probably phasing at this point. Uh, we do see that moderate to heavy snowfall going on for Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, Delaware, New Jersey. We see the freezing rain going on for Virginia, West Virginia, and a lot more of it for the Ohio Valley than any of the other models said as well. I think this is kind of like the European model, just a little bit more realistic, and it's rare that I would randomly side with the Canadian model, but I think this one has a little bit more of a handle on it just based on the situation we're going to find ourselves in. We're still pretty far out. Confidence is still relatively low, but I'm starting to formulate some opinions here. We see it close out by time we're reaching about uh, maybe 1 p.m. there on Tuesday, January 26th. We do see some snow showers lingering for the mid-Atlantic, uh, but our, our storm has fully moved offshore by that point. All right, now what we're going to do here is we are going to move on and we're going to start taking a look at the total snowfall maps according to the European model, the European Ensemble model, the GFS model, the GFS Ensemble model, then the Canadian model, and even the Canadian Ensemble model. And then we're going to get into our confidence bar at the end of this video. All right, so here we are taking a look at the European model's total snowfall map. As you can see, if you're anywhere in the grays, you're taking a look at about a dusting to two inches of snow. If you're in those blues, you're taking a look at about two to six inches of snow. So that's very widespread throughout the plains, the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic and portions of the Northeast as well. Uh, and then if you're anywhere in the purples, you're taking a look at about six to 10 inches of snow. So I'm talking about you guys in Minnesota, Wisconsin there, uh, and then even the Ohio, well, I guess just Ohio in through West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and other portions of the Mid-Atlantic. If you're anywhere in the pinks, we're taking a look at about 10 to 20 inches of snow. And then you see those pastel shades. That's where we're taking a look at about 20, 20 inches plus potentially there for West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, uh, those regions. So I'm going to take this with a grain of salt. Again, the European model was the most major out of any of them. So let's take a look at a zoomed in look at that mid-Atlantic region. I just wanted to talk about that so you can see the exact numbers on the screen. So West Virginia, Northern Virginia, uh, Maryland, they're taking a look at pretty close to and even above two feet in some locations there uh, for the bullseye. So that is quite extreme at this point. Uh, and then as we zoom out and take a look at the Ohio Valley, the, the Mid-Atlantic here, you can see those amounts on the screen. So very widespread, two to four inch amounts there throughout the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Uh, and it gets heavier closer to the coast. Now I wanted to show you the European Ensemble model because this is interesting. Typically you want to see the deterministic model, which in this case would be the European model. You want to see it look similar to the European Ensemble model uh, as far as location, and we do not have that at this point. As we take a look at the European Ensemble model, 
you can see this is much further north with most of those amounts. Uh, so the European model is taking those higher amounts way further south than its ensemble model is supporting. Uh, and that tells me that the European model is probably uh, a little crazy right now. Uh, so we're going to take that with a major grain of salt. I think we could be looking at a storm that is much further north than what the European model is showing. Let's say Pennsylvania through New Jersey and even still impacting uh, southern New England there. Uh, the European ensemble model, it's normal for it to show lower amounts here because this is uh, 50 members combined. This is 50 models combined, basically. So we have many that are showing lower amounts, many that are showing higher amounts, and it averages out much lower than what will likely even just happen in reality. Here's the GFS model. You can see the amounts are lower uh, and everything's suppressed a little bit further south. But again, let's take a look at that GFS ensemble model, and you can see the ensemble model is much further north than the GFS model. So again, I'm taking that GFS model with a major grain of salt. I think things could trend further north here, unless the ensemble models trend further south, in which case we will kind of feel a little bit more confident in what those deterministic models are showing, uh, basically our European model, our GFS model, Canadian model. Here is that Canadian model or our GEM model. And as you can see, it's the furthest north out of any of those models. And once we look at that ensemble model, we can still see that the ensemble is further north than its deterministic model still. So yeah, I'm not buying this south trend just yet. If we start to see it more consistently, I'm going to buy into it a little bit more. But for now, I think there's a good chance we're going to see those models trend back north towards what we were taking a look at yesterday, potentially. Anyway, for our confidence tab, uh, I'm still sitting at a two, guys. I added the numbers on screen, so it's a little less confusing. Uh, but I'm still pretty low in my confidence, especially with this recent major shift in the track, but the ensemble model's not supporting it. Uh, I'm feeling very uh, unconfident in what we're taking a look at. I'm very confident there's going to be a storm. This is the same thing I said yesterday, uh, but the track is super un uncertain at this point. So I'm at about a two out of six at this point. Take it with a grain of salt. We're going to keep you guys updated. Uh, and as we get new information, I'm, of course, going to be releasing that for you guys. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this snowstorm is going to happen? And Stephen Bastow said, I think that the storm will happen. However, the track is still in question. And I certainly agree. And based on my language throughout this video, you know I do <laughs> still today. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. But especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Codalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary's, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be on this Patreon end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.